So the playoffs, NBA playoffs, start uh, a week from tomorrow. The play-in games start uh, Tuesday. And so I think Phoenix is going to kind of fly through the West. I think the Clippers and the Warriors have some matchup uh, advantages over the Sun, so the games will be pretty competitive. But I think they'd fly through everybody else. I think Milwaukee and Phoenix are the two best teams in the league. The difference is Phoenix doesn't have a title, so they're playing this regular season with the urgency of a team that doesn't have a title. Once you win a title, you're Milwaukee. You know, you take the occasional, you know, the Spurs dynasty, a Laker dynasty. You know, you rest your players. You get ready for the postseason. You've already got some hardware. Steven Jackson's got hardware. He was a champ with the Spurs, 14 years in the league. Also, all the smoke with Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes, wildly popular pod. Yes, look at that, baby. That is nice. Um, he, uh, let me throw this at you. Is that um, you played with Chris Paul, and I always loved Chris because I thought he was old school. He was feisty. He was tough. He would bark at players. And I, I said last year, I said with Phoenix, I said those young guys will get barked at for a while. But once they start getting the bag – they may not want to hear old Chris Paul barking at him. Are you surprised how smoothly Chris and Phoenix have been since he arrived, Stephen? It has just been win after win after win. Well, I mean, th that's what happens when everybody buys in. I think a lot of a lot of the guys there looked up to Chris regardless of what was said about him. They know he is a, he's a winner. They know he's a guy that plays hard and comes to work every night regardless of what people say about him. And he, he's a great leader. And those guys respect him regardless of if, if he's barking, he's barking for a reason. And when you have a whole team buy-in, when you have a coach like Monty Williams that guys rely on and respect, this is what happens. And uh, that's, what, that's, all, that's what happens in every winning organization. Now, uh, uh, over in the East, uh, people are speculating about the KD-Kyrie team. And here's probably my pushback. Um, man, they don't play much together. They haven't gone on a long winning streak. I'm not saying they don't have great halves. But, Stephen, if you haven't won seven, eight games in a row in a regular season, I have a hard time embracing you as a, a really great, valid title contender. I know Durant and Kyrie are remarkable. What do you, no, I mean, what do you make of them? I agree with you on that. I mean, it, it, it's hard to say that because a lot of times, and me knowing from experience, going into the playoffs, everything has to be rolling for your team to have success in the playoffs. You know, at the end of the season, everybody has to be healthy. The team has to be on at least a, a good winning feel about, the, about how they're playing, going into the playoffs, to even have success in the playoffs. So I understand that. But if I had to go into the playoffs with any team that's discombobulated and any players that discombobulated and have confidence in the team, it would be the Nets with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. You know, I, we said this the other day about Kevin Durant on the show. I said, he may not say it publicly, but Ben Simmons isn't there. James Harden quit. Kyrie couldn't play home games. And if he was back with Golden State right now, they would be a handful. Do you think he's ever had a moment privately where he's thought, damn, what did I do? Uh, I'm, I'm sure he has. I mean, we, we all make decisions. Some, some we regret, some we don't. But at the end of the day, he's still one of the best players we've ever seen play the game. You know, multiple uh, uh, champion. Multiple finals MVP. So, you know, I, I don't think he has any regrets. Uh, we all, even even with decision making that I've made in my career, you know, with, with walking away from teams and not want to play with teams, there's some things we regret. But if you do it your way for the most part and, and you respect the game and play the game the way it's supposed to be played, which he has done, uh, it, it's hard to have any regrets or, or to even think about things like that when you're having a great career. What would you do if you ran the Lakers? Um, a couple years ago, they won the title in the bubble. And AD came back the following year after summer out of shape. And up in the building, LeBron was really discouraged. Vogel was really discouraged. He's never been known as a grinder. Uh, that's not his style. In fact, he doesn't even want to play the five. He wants to go out and shoot jumpers. What do you do with AD? Because I... You know, Stephen, if they keep bringing back AD, you're going to have injuries. He's not going to be a grinder. He doesn't have your leadership qualities. You know what I mean? Like, my thing is, I would have moved off him two years ago. I'm in the minority. What do you do with him going forward with the Lakers? You know, I'm, I'm right there with you.
you know, I was a guy that was saying he's a more athletic Tim Duncan, but I got to I got to take my words back because, you know, even though Tim, I know Tim played injured, but Tim took care of his body. You know, even even when we playing paintball all summer with Tim uh, 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 practicing in uh, like UFC fighting, he took he took care of his body. He worked out all year and Tim wasn't muscular. Tim wasn't just a big, strong guy. That was just, just his muscles popping out everywhere. But he played and he played. He, he stayed healthy and he played a lot of games. So. But but for AD, I just don't think that he takes care of his body. He takes the game serious as other guys. Uh, I think he's just talented, uh, uh, naturally talented. And uh, if I was the Lakers, you know, I, I would start looking at different ways. I never thought Vogel was a coach. From year one, I've been said this from year one. Uh, when you put a healthy AD and a healthy LeBron together, it's going to be easy to win a championship as long as they're healthy in any year. But when you have to coach, when you have guys injured, when you have to throw guys in and out the lineup, then we see what type of coach you are. And obviously he hasn't been successful in that. So, but if I was the Lakers, if AD doesn't take his body serious, if we can't sit down and have a conversation and understand how serious these last years for LeBron are to him and to this organization, if AD can't jump on board, you have to move him. You know, you played with Duncan, great players in their prime, LeBron, uh, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson. When a great player's in his prime, there often are veterans who will take a little less they, they've got their money. They want to ring. They want to go on the road. They want to get on that plane after another win. Do you think Do you think really talented players in the league view LeBron as the kind of guy they'd take less to play with, or is that ship sailed? Um, I don't think it's sailed. Uh, I think more guys want to be around LeBron and be his, be his friend off the court than, uh, than actually play basketball with him. You know, um, me personally, you know, as, as great as LeBron is, I would love to play with LeBron because I know he'll make the game easy for me. And I know we have a great chance to win a championship if I do my job. But think about it. When we won a championship in 03, let's look at the vets we had that wasn't making money. We had Steve Kerr, Danny Ferry, Steve Smith. Um, uh, 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 David Robson wasn't really making that much in his career. We had um, we also had uh, Kevin Willis. We had all these veterans that were taking low contracts just to win the championship. I don't think guys respect winning the championship that more um, as much as they did when I was playing. And uh, I don't think it's really too much as LeBron. I just think guys rather make the money and be comfortable just playing and win is not as, as important no more. You know, it's funny. Adam Silver, um, during his State of the Union this week, acknowledged it's a problem in the NBA. Many of the best players are simply missing too many games. You tell me, how would you incentivize players to play more? What would you do? It, it's, it's hard to once they sign their name on their contract. You've been around a long time. When I was playing, it was an honor to play 82. We, won, we, was, we, we fought to play 82, broken toes, anything. We fought to play 82 because that was something that you hung your hat on. These days, uh, I think guys are just worrying about getting to the playoffs and playing well in the playoffs. And to me, that's disrespecting the game. You give the game all you have. The, 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 the fans are there giving you all they have. You're making all this money. Respect the game, and the game will respect you. And I think that's why I had a career. I wasn't the most at the, the great career. I wasn't the most athletic and the best basketball player, but I respected the game. And respecting the game always put me in great situations. So I think if guys get back to the old school, respecting the game and not worrying about uh, being there at the end and just playing the whole way, most of the time when you get injured, it's because you're thinking about getting injured. And that's just the truth of the game. Yeah. 14 years. Podcast All the Smoke. Steven Jackson, Matt Barnes. Good seeing you, my man. Congrats on all your success. You're crushing it. Appreciate it. Good to see you, man. Steve Jackson, uh, Fox Sports NBA analyst as well. Yeah, Adam Silver has uh, uh, came out this week and just said, listen, we got we got an issue. I I... You know, obviously, you shouldn't have to incentivize people making $35 million a year to go to work. Um, uh, just the world we live in. I, I, I go back to this. Hard parenting, hard coaching, hard commissioning. It works. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.